there's one thing that I've learnt in life, you understand, is that you cannot save a man that refuses to be saved. It's, it's like pissing in the wind. White, um, currently um, living rough, um, don't have a job, um, that's it. So you live permanently on the streets? Um, not all the time, no. Um, Framework, um, which is a local charity, and the, you know, they help us out, and a few of us too, so. Um, Whenever they got spaces, we we queue up and we wait outside. I mean, if this space is great, I mean, we've got a nice bed, well, a bed. <laughs> um, there's some good lads that go there and girls too, and it's just somewhere nice, a, a roof over your head, you know? I'm Andrew White. I'm a successful entrepreneur. I'm, um, I'm based in London. Um, but I travel all over the world with work. I'm, I'm extremely lucky and um, I've done very well in life. There's a lot of people on these streets, um, more than you think, and, and they just get brushed under the rug, you know? But, um, but yeah, so maybe three days out of the week um, I have to sleep rough and, and find somewhere, you know, warm and in the shade, I guess, uh, out of the way. Uh, we're really lucky these places exist, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Sometimes I kind of like, oh, it's going to sound weird, but I kind of like being on the streets. Uh, it's this, I don't know, it's like a hum of people's voices. It's, it, I don't know, it's kind of like a hymn. <laughs> it's kind of soothing. But, you know, not all the time. What do you think are the main self traits that have brought you success you know, and failure? I guess I've been desperately lonely my whole life. I, I've always just felt like I can feel people, you know, and feel their, their anger, their upset, you know, their joy, their happiness, everything. And, um, I guess I never was really able to distance myself from it. Um, it, it, it was like um, it was like traffic in my brain. Um, I just couldn't couldn't define tune it, you know. Like a I don't know, just I just had these headaches, and it just made me lonely. I I, I couldn't connect with anyone. You know, people couldn't understand me. They you know, instead of trying to help me, they they just shunned me. They just they just crammed drugs down my throat, and and <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny 
because I thought I should open, you know, some shares in Boots. <laughs> they gave me a lot of drugs. You know, the um, my health worker, um, anyone really. My family, when I was younger, they they just gave me these, you know, prescription anxiety drugs because they thought that um, you know, I had anxiety. They thought I had ADHD. Oh, oh what else did they think I had? Um, epilepsy. <laughs> Anyway, um, they just didn't know what to do with me, you know, and then, well, anyway, things took a turn for the worse a bit later on, but, you know, I'm not going to go into that. Why are you bothering with this prick? Huh? You're doing just fine by yourself. I mean, sure, you've hit a little speed bump, but you stuck to what you believe in. You'll do fine. Who's this clown? He's laughing at you. He is laughing at you. You know, I hate myself for it, you know. I, I um, thought I was a weirdo. And the parents didn't help. You know, they were so wrapped up in their own shit. Um, uh, and the, obviously the drugs weren't helping and I just felt like a freak, you know. I, I hated myself because of it. and. I guess that made me more lonely. It pushed me into isolation, I guess. I didn't have the, the best start in life, you understand, but I made the most out of the very least, and um, I never made excuses. I never, I never blamed anybody. I, I simply just got on with what I needed to do. You know, um, and I, I suppose I was quite relentless. <laughs> Some have said that I was a bit like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> um, you know, always chaos. But I worked hard. I made a lot of friends, a lot of good friends that supported me along the way. Um, and I treat, they treated me very well and I treated them very well also. And um, I just always believed in making yourself the best version of you, uh, you know, constantly transforming yourself emotionally, uh, spiritually, intellectually, um, and socially, I, I suppose. Um, and I just, I just never stop until I'm the best that I can be. And I suppose I've, I've always had that mentality, um, whilst others that I know or certainly my parents, they. They, they wasted so much time um, doing not an awful lot. And I suppose that made me realize that time is very precious and we must use every second to, to, um, to our advantage. I was an idiot. Yeah, as I said, I hated myself when I was younger, so <sighs> I guess I couldn't, you know, I couldn't connect with anyone, as I was saying. And, um, you know, it, it isolated me, but I did, I always did what I thought was right in my own head. And I don't know how you define success, but, you know, maybe I have nothing, or maybe I have everything, I don't know. I still got my head on my shoulders, so, in a way. Must be something you feel <laughs> proud about. I'm a survivor, mate. I mean, we're all survivors. I, you know, as soon as that little taddy breaks through that unfathomable fucking egg. <laughs> and what was you know, it like, Greg? How should we make it? <laughs> but, you know, whose upbringing's perfect? I mean, come on. Uh, I mean, yeah, there was drugs and drink and other stuff, but, you know, um, my grandparents, you know, took me in in the end. But I can't help but think that they took a bit more of a liking to, you know, to Andy. Um, helped him to love himself, you know? Figure out who he is and where he belongs in the world. Um, you know, and I, I guess I hated that. I was always missing that piece, you know? Um, I don't think I ever really found it. You know, Chris and I did a lot of the cliche things that children do. Um, 
build tree houses, you know, go out and bike rides, exploring the world, you know, um, playing with friends, um, video games, you know. But, um, you know, it wasn't always that way. I, certainly, my, my mother and father were very selfish individuals, and, and so our relationships were very, <coughs> excuse me, were very fragmented, you see. Um, and, you know, my, my mother drank and my, my father um, was a substance abuser. And, and I didn't really have an awful lot. I was close to my mother for, for, for a long time and then things just got too much. And um, I realised early on that I needed to break free and, and make a better life for myself. So, so I moved in with my grandparents. Um, and they took me under their wing and, and, and supported me and, and um, I suppose gave me the confidence in myself I needed to, to be an adult in, in the world that we live in. Um, but no, I suppose it, it, it wasn't the usual setup um, being brought up by your grandparents, but you know, I, it was rather nice. I, I suppose. They, they did a better job than my parents would have known how to do, and I suppose I'm a better a better man now because of that. So I guess I just always, you know, saw the you know the op best opportunities out of the worst situations. But I think as a child, you 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 only really care about yourself and and your internal bubble. You know what's good for you, um, and so I was very good at getting on with things and I suppose I, I maintained that same childlike attitude up until now. I went to the same schools as Andy, I ate the same processed bullshit, watched the same garbage on TV. Um, but I was always questioning things, you know, I was always wondering how everything worked, the intricacies of everything, you know, people. And, just things really and um, he always just wanted instant gratification he wanted it now he didn't care about people or people's feelings he only wanted what he wanted he wanted to be he always wanted to win he always wanted to be right you know um, that's all he cared about self-preservation do you feel it that it was a lack of love from your siblings that pushed you into isolation I just wanted something more. You know, to feel like I... To feel like I meant more to my mum than the drink. To feel like... To feel loved. You know, I was always the guardian. Being so young and... Making sure that everything, that my mum was okay. When my dad left, um, you know, I, I was the the one that looked after her, which was the two of us. And, um, and I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was ten. What does a ten-year-old know? More than you might think, actually. I don't know what to say. I'm disappointed with you. You've got to listen to your gut, listen to your instinct. That's where the truth lies. You need to find the strength and the courage to reinvent yourself, reinvigorate yourself. Only then will you find success. You've got to listen to me. You've got to change your attitude, your behavior. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Can't you see? <laughs> Nobody cares about you and what you're going through. The world keeps spinning and you're losing. You can do this. You really can do it. You just gotta believe. You gotta change your attitude. I believe in you. I think you can do this. I really do. But 
deal? But I've come to realise that I don't know what love is. <laughs> you know, that somehow I saw this obscure reflection, almost as obscure, you know, as, as when I look in the mirror. And that I receive that they know how to give. I didn't, it doesn't translate with the real world, you know, I didn't... <sighs> Tell me how you feel about Andrew now. I love him. Of course I love him. You know, um... Have I hated him? Yeah. Of course I have. You know, uh, he, he had everything that I always wanted, you know. Uh, a little bit more love, you know, more friends, feel connected to the world and to people. But um, I can never understand them. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me. But you see, his problem was he was afraid. He was afraid to feel love, to, to open up in case he got hurt. He was a cold fish, that boy. Um, and like I said, he only ever cared about what he wanted. You know, and he got it. At the expense of everybody else. Their feelings, their emotions. He didn't give a shit. And if that's how you want to define success, and do it, you know, if, if, if that's what people think is the fucking answer, then, um, sure. <laughs> Chris. Oh, um, oh, dear. I... He's a dreamer. He, he, he lives in the clouds, he, he... He can't cope with reality, so he, he takes all these substances and bloody hangs around with these idiots, these morons, and, and he, he drinks because he can't cope, he can't find peace in the real world, and I can't understand it. I just can't understand how anybody can live life like this day to day, you know, scared and afraid and weak. You know, I, we were both thrown into the water, but I learned to swim very quickly, and Chris, well, he, he just treads water, he, he, he just treads day after day, because I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't know the guy, I, I, I fail to understand the mechanics of his mind and how he works, and Look, I, if I did understand him, I suppose we'd be in the same position, but no, I don't understand him. I, have I tried? Yes, of course I've tried. But I'll tell you one thing. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And this guy feels like everybody owes him a favour. Like he doesn't have to work, like he doesn't have to contribute to society. Look, we all have to contribute. There's no escape, there's no getting out of this. I'm sorry, but it really bugs me. I I don't know what to say. I I worked hard, very hard, to get where I am today. To all of this that I've earned and crafted from my bare hands, from hard work, from networking, from connecting, from I I I came from the same upbringing as Chris but we had different ideals, attitudes, and beliefs about how to live our lives. I didn't make excuses. You know, I didn't blame anybody. Things are as they are. Shit happens. You know, but he, he's lazy. He, he, he's full of hatred and, and blame. And I've never been able to understand that attitude to just 
glide by. When we were kids, we had nothing. Not a dime, you know. Uh, there were times when, um, when we didn't have enough to even make a sandwich, not a slice of bread, you know. Some days we had no electric, no gas, you know, we'd sit there um, with candles, some nights. You know, and he never wanted that. He, he never wanted that. It made him realise that the only thing he wanted was to be fucking rich. It's the only thing he had and the only thing he thought about in his mind the whole time. Um, he was scared to death of going back there, to that place. You know, I found solace in it in a way. Um, but he couldn't do it. But you see, this thing about greed is it's this this disease that, that makes you so fucking thirsty that, that you can't quench it. You want more and more, and it's never enough. It becomes an obsession. I mean, yeah, some might say he has the old fucking works. You know, he has the parties with the fake tits and, and people that smile through gritted teeth. But ask me if I want it. Go on, ask me. I won't trade it for the fucking world. So is his soul. And fuck right off. You know, a friend of mine once told me that above all, abandonment is the worst sin that you can impose on anybody. You know, to leave a man with no feeling of love, you know, a feeling of emptiness, because all he does is inflict that hatred and that emptiness on everybody that he meets. Spreads it like a virus. And, um, you know, tries to find the answer to questions in which he has not yet asked himself. So you think he put success before his family? Yeah, of course. He got scared, he did a runner. You know what his favourite game was when we were growing up? Knock a door, fucking run. Should have known. <laughs> what things do you think you have done right and wrong? Stubbornness, I guess. Uh, um, you know, my stubbornness and my, I suppose my loyalty and what I believed in, you know, my unwillingness to change my belief systems, you know, they were kind of rigid, so I couldn't bend, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't fucking lick anyone's asses to get where I wanted to be, I just stayed true to myself, but in a way it's a, you know, it's a weakness, you know, not only does it isolate you, but people don't want to help you, and you know, you don't, if you're not flexible, you, you can't survive. Um, but, you know, my hating myself was a big thing. It's always been a big thing. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, change it. Um, but maybe the only thing is, that's important is that we can love ourselves first, you know. Because how else can we learn to love anybody else? Can't, can we? I, I was very hard working. I was always a believer that you're responsible for your own destiny um, by working hard. You know, your own successes and failures are determined by, by the, the, what you put into life. And, um, but in the last year or so, I, I've started to address some of my own issues as a human being. And I've come to realise that it's not simply ourselves that have an influence over how, how we do in life. I, certainly, as I said, my grandparents had a profound impact on my successes as a, you know, as a person. They, they shaped me into a confident young man, um, gave me the manners and all the etiquette and, uh, and support that I needed, really. And I suppose it's the same with everyone in life. If you surround yourself by good people, they, they can elevate you, you see. So it's not just a matter of, of what you put into it. There's, a, there's all these external influences that, that, as I said, have a profound impact on your success. Um, so yes, I worked hard. I made no excuses, but at the same time, I, I took no prisoners. And I suppose, as we go on to the weaknesses, I, I would say that I was a little relentless. Um, 
in my quest for success because I never, um, I always knew what I wanted to do. I always knew what I wanted to be even as a child and I, I, I knew what I needed to do to get there. And you see, I, I, I didn't suffer fools gladly and I suppose that that made people feel like I was a little bit selfish and, and stubborn and um, self-obsessed and, and perhaps I was all of those things. Um, and uh, you know, it's something that I'm working on. Certainly since uh, Jessica and I have been engaged, I've learned to be a lot more open-minded and um, think about other people, for sure. And um, I, I, I've learned that it's possible to be a successful individual without being selfish and, and, and egotistic and, and cold. What are your opinions about the world we live in today? It doesn't really matter what I think. You'll be the first to give me shit. Um, you know, I feel like I'm stuck in a lift with Ronald McDonald, the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland and Adolf fucking Hitler. <laughs> the world's run by a bunch of fucking nutters who, who spoon feed this sugar coated bullshit into the mouths of, you know, a brainwashed over consuming mass. You know, the questioning get accused of insanity and force fed legal drugs. You know, that only extinguish their sensical thoughts whilst, you know, the sane run around like mad fucking atters. I own the substances that they demoralise whilst walking around in shiny suits, driving shiny cars. You know, hypocrites, throwing stones from glass houses. Some might say it's corrupt. Um, certainly a lot of people feel that way. Um, but there's a lot of negativity that looms around uh, and I try not to be, I try not to get involved with all of the negative attitudes. Certainly I, I live a good life, but I've earned that good life and I pay my taxes, um, I have good friends and I make the best of the very least. I, you can always find something bad to complain about, but there are a lot of good people in the world and I've met a lot of them, a lot of um, influential people, a lot of wonderful people that, that self-heartlessly give to, you know, to others. And I feel like um, when you're surrounded by a certain type of individual, you, you share the same attitudes and, and beliefs. And if you're surrounded by negative people, you, you kind of feed off of each other and it um, and it grows but when you're around positive people people that um, people that want to do well and want to see the best in things and want to grab opportunities they they too share the same um, attitudes and beliefs and it, and it kind of creates this split you know where you have um, one side versus another but you know you're always going to get that but generally speaking, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm atheist, but I, I don't have, uh, I don't follow a religion. I try to do well by people. I, I try to treat others as I would, you know, like to be treated. And, and um, you know, I live by that ethos. And I suppose that's enough for me, really. It feels like life's like living in a Tupperware tub, you know, 50 shades of fucking grey. And... You know, I'm sick of seeing these miserable cunts walking around like they're living dead. You know, like I said, I feel them. You know, because I sleep rough a lot, I can't avoid them, really. And, you know, they're my main attraction. I don't know, maybe we're all fucked. All I know is that love, love above all things will set you free. You know, every man is, has his opinion on what things are right and wrong in the world, you know, but you've got to let people live and breathe through their own mistakes, you know, learn and grow. You know, isn't that the whole fucking point? You know, germinate, grow, mature, die. You see, it dawned on me that, that we're all in some way connected, you know, in these highly complex interconnected webs and we all, you know, enter and leave you know, different times and some points in the cycle within a web and we have some degree of influence within each connection within our web and that in turn has an influence on another web and so on that we're all fucking connected What is your plan moving forward? Um, try to love myself a little bit more you know, maybe see the best intentions in people and 
try to accept that the world isn't fucking perfect and I mean, let's try and find my place of solitude within what we've got. You know, maybe I find a room with a view <laughs> and someone that digs me and you know puts a roof over my head. Um, and maybe I'll find peace with the fact that I felt unloved by a bunch of selfish, destructive cunts of parents. <laughs> You know, maybe I'll forgive Andy for leaving me in this shit. But most of all, I forgive myself. A lot of learning and developing to do, but I'm just trying to enjoy everything and enjoy my, my fiance and, and everything that I've earned in life. How do you f intend to find solace? <laughs> Skeptical <Windows>. prick. <laughs> Skeptical. Having nothing to do afforded me the luxury of time, you know, and I've been thinking for a long time about what I want to do and what my plan is. Um, and Framework have hooked me up with this girl and she's trying to put me back into work and find somewhere to live and I'm grateful, I'm fucking grateful. You know, the old me would have just told me to fuck off. But um, I want to change. I want to make a go of things and try to just maybe stick my toe into the water, feel the ripples, you know, whether I jump in or not, we'll see. And I'd like to work on building some kind of relationship with, with Chris, um, but we'll see where life goes and, and, you know, where life takes me. You know, maybe I'll let a few more people in work on my human relationship skills. <laughs> and finally, how about your brother Andrew? I can see he's quite the influence on you this far. My brother? Has there been any... I don't have a brother. But I thought Andrew was your brother. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? It all comes out. Could away, couldn't it? Strong enough to do it. It all comes out in the end. We're brave enough to sing. It all comes out in the end. We're strong enough to win. It all comes out in the end. We're brave enough to stand.